This module is on variables. In particular, we're going to cover the basics like a floating point number, integers, and strings. Here's the source code. And if you select that, it's going to go to the GitHub website. And you can download right here under clone or download. Just go ahead and download the zip file or you can clone it and then you'll have access to all of the files. Okay, so let's just talk about variables. They store information and they're objects in Python. For example, in your project, if you wanted to keep a set temperature for an egg, you would type something like egg or temperature equals 37.5 degrees Celsius, or in this case, in Fahrenheit, 99.5. So the first part tells you what the variable is going to be called, and then it's going to store its value uh, here on the right-hand side. Now, there are different types of variables. Now we're just going to cover the basics, but there are many others, especially as you use other packages, you're going to see uh, different types of objects. So let's just... Uh, run through some of these you just have to hit control and enter to run it and we're going to start with integers okay create a new integer temp equals 99 and there are no decimal uh, uh, values after the integer number so I'm gonna have to run this so I'm gonna have to open up Jupyter notebook and after it opens then I'm going to go where I have those files stored that were downloaded. Now this is uh, number three, which is variables. And just scroll down to uh, here where I'm looking at temp. I'll make this just a little bit bigger. Okay, if I hit control enter, it will run it. I have no output there. If I print uh, temp, for example, uh, it shows me that I'm have a value of 99. Now the other thing I can do is the int function. And if I do 99.5 and I print that, then it's going to basically just remove uh, this decimal. Even if I have something like negative 99.5, it's not going to round it down. It's just going to take the integer value. Okay, so uh, if we go on to floats, those are floating point numbers. Uh, and for example, a price might have uh, you know, a decimal point with some additional digits that come after. And I can also see, uh, you know, I can do things like combine a price and temp. Okay, temp times price, uh, we can combine those. And uh, it's going to multiply the two. So if I have an integer multiplied by a floating point number, the result is going to be a floating point number. OK, we also have strings as well. Now these are like text. And you can place them in either a double quote or single quote. Uh, so if you have something like, uh, you know, uh, your uh, so let's go John's uh, bicycle. Okay, then you can print that out. Uh, greeting. Okay, and we have something that's a single quote inside. But let's say we had something like John said. Uh, hello, then you'd want to encase that in single quotes. Okay, sometimes it puts in the two quotes there. It's kind of hard to delete just one of them. Um, so you can also print out double quotes or single quotes if you just encase it in the one that you don't need for the string. All right, so let's go on down to Boolean. Boolean are true or false statements. So here is an answer is true. And then we can also do something like our temp. Okay, so if I do temp times answer, 
Okay, that's going to be 99. So true is also like a 1. It'll convert it to a 1 if you multiply an integer by a true or false. A 1 is true and a 0 is false. So if I put this as false instead, don't forget the capital uh, first letter of false or true. And then it becomes a 0 when I use it in math expressions. Okay, we're also going to use those for like if statements uh, and others will use uh, these as conditionals uh, in, in Boolean form. All right, comments are another important part of any uh, program. They begin with this hash symbol and here they'll turn a different color to let you know they're just going to be ignored. They're just a comment to help explain what is happening. They don't do anything. Uh, to the program. So let's now talk about some of the rules of variables and variable naming. So in order to name a variable, it can only start with letters or an underscore. After the first character, you can use letters, numbers, and underscores, but there's also there are also many other characters that you can't use in uh, in in variable names. Okay, so you can start with an underscore, although those are typically reserved for hidden uh, parameters or variables, defaults, other things like that. I don't recommend uh, starting with an underscore. Okay, but you can do lowercase or uppercase. All right, and so this is a valid variable name. Uh, right here it starts with an underscore and then there's the number is not starting the name so it's okay. Okay so let's try to run these and you'll see some errors and we need to uh, look at some of the syntax errors. Alright so if I uh, take this away then that is going to work. Now this one is can't assign to a literal and it's pointing at this line right here, so you can't start it, okay, with a number, you have to do this instead, now it works. If you had a number there, you could compare it to the string, for example, do a double equal sign, and that would also work, but we don't want to compare those, we want to have a new variable name, and uh, so you just want to start it with a character or underscore. All right, let's look at uh, variable properties as well. Uh, now we can um, go ahead and run this. All right, and we have test equals three, which is an integer. And then we changed it to a string, which is egg. And now we're going to look at the type of variable. Uh, now test changed from an integer. All right, so if I put this up here and print out the type and then I'll print down below what is the type after it's converted so right here it's an integer and then it is converted to a string so many other languages you have to declare what type of variable you're using and then it becomes immutable it cannot change but in Python you can uh, change the variable type. If you just assign it to a different type, it will change that variable. All right, let's talk about variable usage. Uh, we can use variables in mathematical expressions or to add strings together. Uh, we have uh, a couple strings uh, here and also some integers that are added together. And you can also add, for example, an integer and a string together. Okay, so if I print that out, combined int and string, then it's going to be 5 degrees uh, Celsius. Now, let's say I had an 8 here. Okay, that's going to be 58. Okay, but if I have 5 plus 8, as integers and that's going to be 13. So the answer is going to depend on what type of variables you're adding together. If I add them together as strings, 58. If I add them together as integers, it's going to be 13. So let's uh, do an activity here. We'll make one variable for every variable type, string, integer, float, and boolean. 
So you can choose which ones you want to use here. I'll just go ahead and put my name here. And then an integer, I'll say 13. Float, uh, I'll do 26.2. Okay, a half marathon and full marathon distance there. 13.1, uh, okay, and then Boolean, I'll say that is true. Okay, and then run it. And we can't use float here because then we're gonna be reassigning that uh, function name. So for example, if I wanted to convert this into a floating point number and add 0 0.1, then I can print uh, integer, which is no longer an integer. It's going to be a floating point number. Uh, let's see what I have here. Okay, I have a float. Oh, I reassign that. Okay, so I what I need to do is just restart my kernel uh, because now I reassigned what float meant and uh, float no longer meant this function. I changed the function into something else. So I had to restart my kernel to clear that variable and then I could run it again and then Integer now became 13.1, which is no longer an integer. It's a floating point number. Okay, so let's go on down um, to the next one. We're going to uh, assign a, a chicken name. We're going to have this for our incubator temperature control. And I'm going to call this uh, Leghorn for our chicken. And then um, now we want to combine some of these. Um, I'll combine the variables x and y below by changing their types to string. And if you get stuck, just remember, go up and use the examples up above. Okay, so if I uh, add these together, all right, and then I print combined, all right, true is going to be a 1, okay, where we may not uh, have intended that. But let's go ahead and change their types to strings and then add them together. All right, so I'm just going to do str true and I'll do str uh, of that and then I get true 236.4. Okay, so I added them together as strings instead. Now let's go ahead and, and just start on the project using some of the information that we already gathered today. If you come down below, here's our final project. And this is putting all the different lessons together in the course. Uh, you know, and, and it allows you to review the material. Um, we're gonna start with some pseudocode, some high-level instructions on what you want your program to do. And we'll start filling in those parts of the code and test each part as we go. So let's just use um, a variable assignment today to be able to start our project, fill in one of these sections with the overall objective in mind. The overall objective is program the temperature control lab to maintain a temperature, T1, at 37 degrees Celsius by adjusting the heater, Q1. We'll display the heater level, Q1, with an LED indicator as the program is adjusting the temperature. We'll create a plot of the temperature and heater values over a 10 minute evaluation period. So let's go ahead and just insert a new, um, you know, you have a cell down here. We can just go ahead and use that. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do pseudocode. We'll go ahead and import the libraries that we need. We'll give a um, set uh, the target temperature. Okay, we know how to do that one. Uh, so T uh, is going to equal 37. Okay, there's our integer value. We didn't need to use a floating point number. All right, and then we want to uh, do in a monitor uh, every second for 10 minutes. We're going to do use a loop to do that. We'll cover that in a subsequent uh, in a subsequent section. And then inside this loop, I'm going to read the temperature. Oops, temperature. 
Okay, uh, and then if to low increase the temperature, and if to uh, increase the heater. Okay, if too high, we'll decrease the heater. All right, and then we'll display a heater level with LED. All right, there's our target temperature. Um, up here, we set that, but let's do something else. Let's just see if we can display the heater level. Let's do this one right here. Let's just complete the pseudocode though. And then we'll, after, after 10 minutes, uh, we will display a plot of the data. All right, so there's some pseudocode at a very high level, what we're gonna be doing for our uh, project. Now, uh, for this one, we're gonna import some libraries like import TC lab. All right, and then maybe in the pseudocode, we'll connect to TC lab. And then at the very end, we'll also uh, disconnect from TC lab. All right, uh, so connecting to the TC lab, we're gonna say lab equals, and then we'll do TC lab dot TC lab. All right, and then to disconnect, we'll do lab dot close. And uh, here we have the set, the target temperature, but let's display the heater level. Um, let's see, I'll say the heater level uh, we'll say uh, set the heater level here, and I'll say Q equals 50. All right, and then if we want to display the heater level, we'll do lab.led, and we'll put in Q there. All right, so we've connected to the lab. We're going to use the function LED to turn on the LED to 50%, and it's the same as what the heater level is. And then we'll disconnect from the TC lab, and we'll skip all the other steps in here. We'll add those later as we learn about loops and we learn about other things related to the project. All right, let's just do this one. Anything that's not um, in comments, it's going to run this. And uh, let's just go ahead and connect up the TC lab just so we can see what's happening here. I've got the uh, temperature control lab right here. And what I'm gonna do is just take the uh, cable right here. This is our, let me see if I can get a better angle on this. This is going to be the uh, connection right here that I'm going to need for this one. Okay, I don't actually wanna turn on the heater level, but I just have a variable there. And I'm gonna plug this into my computer. And uh, let's go ahead and just run this. I'm gonna put this over to the side so we can see this uh, LED turn on. All right, and it's just gonna turn on for a very brief second um, as it runs. Okay, and let's just see. Okay, that was, uh, it did turn on and it just stayed on. Okay, and uh, so it's on at 50% right now. If I wanted to change it to 100%, okay, it's gonna get just a little bit brighter. All right, and then I can turn it off as well. Okay, so we used a uh, variable here, which is Q, we set that, and then we used it in one of our functions to adjust the LED level. So this is an example of a variable value that we can adjust and then use it to change something on the temperature control lab. Okay, so that uh, concludes this one. The next thing we're going to learn about is printing. We showed a little bit of uh, an example of how to print a value here in this lesson. We'll cover that in a lot more detail in the next lesson.